Hi, this is Lara at Elliott Wave Stock Market with your daily analysis for the S&P 500 for the trading session dated Thursday 10th of October. Movement above 1685.66 and outside the channel on the hourly chart has indicated a trend change. For this main wave count I expect that the fourth wave correction was actually over down here. I'm expecting more upwards movement and if intermediate wave 5 exhibits a Fibonacci time relationship, it may end in a Fibonacci 13 sessions, which would take it up to the 28th of October. So I'll be looking for that date as a possible end to this upwards movement. At 1764, primary wave C would reach a quality in length with primary A. I'm not going to add an intermediate wave degree calculation to this target because there's already an almost perfect relationship between intermediate waves 1 and 3. So we may not see a ratio between the fifth wave and either the first or third. Within this fifth wave, we should be looking out for a second wave correction to come maybe tomorrow, and it can't move beyond the start of the first wave. Movement below 1646.47 would, at this stage, invalidate this wave count. And I will again be expecting price to find resistance at the upper edge of these channels, the black channel in the first instance. Maybe it will come to end where the black and maroon channel cross over. Let's have a look at this on the hourly chart at the end of intermediate 4 down here. Is this point down here? So we have a completed 535 zigzag structure, and now to the upside for Thursday's session, this upwards movement subdivides perfectly as quite a clear 5 wave impulse. So that gives me more confidence today that we have had a trend change down here. I'll be looking out for a second wave correction probably to begin tomorrow's session. Although on the five minute chart, there's not enough upwards, sorry, there's not enough or any downwards movement at the end of the session to confirm that this final fifth wave is over. When we see price move below this point right here, at that stage, I'll be confident that minor wave one is over and minor two is underway. Minor wave two is likely to end at one of either the 0.382 or 0.618 Fibonacci ratio of minor wave 1 and I favour the 0.618 because it's a more common place for second waves to end. It can't move beyond the start of the first wave below 1646.47. At the daily chart level this alternate remains valid. It has a lot more upwards movement though and a couple of fourth wave corrections coming up along the way. It's probably not going to end on the 28th of October if this is the correct wave count. I favour the second higher target. The first target doesn't fit with the hourly chart and it probably wouldn't allow enough room for upwards movement for this structure to complete. At 1849, minor wave 5, which looks like it's extending, would reach a quality in length with minor wave 3, which was extended. The invalidation point's the same. The subdivisions on the hourly chart are the same and the expectation for what should happen tomorrow is the same. If we see a little bit more upwards movement at the start of tomorrow's session, then it could be that this little fifth wave is aiming to reach equality with this first wave. There's no Fibonacci ratio between the first wave and the third wave, but at this point the fifth wave is 0.618 the length of the first wave. If it moves up a little bit higher, I wouldn't expect much more upwards movement for it to reach equality with the first before a deep second wave correction begins. So that upwards movement was strong and a clear 5 wave impulse upwards on the hourly chart. It's enough to confirm to me that we have an end to that downwards correction and most likely a final 5th wave up has begun which may end on the 28th of October about 1764. That's all for me today with your S&P analysis and I hope that all our members had a fabulous day.